Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. So in the previous video, we talked about one add-on Altair, which was helping us to trigger a queries and mutation. But there is already an inbuilt tool available in the Apollo. I was just writing the wrong endpoint in the previous video. Uh, base endpoint is already this. So you can also use this localhost 4000 GraphQL. This is our root URL and then Graph IQL. So this will also help us to see what is the schema we have. Okay, this is the schema you can see, right? This is what the schema is exposing, queries, recipes, okay? These are the mutations I have, two mutations, create user, create recipe, and these are different queries, user, user by ID, all recipe, and recipe by ID. And in the documentation, you can see, this is how you can trigger the query. These are the type defined for the query. All recipe will, be a, will return an array of recipes, and recipe has ID, title, ingredients, direction, and user object. Then we have a recipe, recipe has all these attributes and these are the two mutations. So queries and mutations both are there. And it is kind of same structure. I mean, you don't need to use any add-on or tool if you directly wanted to use it. So you can just either use this, which we talked in the previous video, or you can just expose this endpoint, which is already there inbuilt in the Apollo server version two. You just need to use this graph IQL endpoint and you'll be able to trigger a query. So right now we don't have a data. So we are getting the data as null. And in this query, what we are doing is we are triggering the user query and we are passing these arguments, ID name and email. Okay. So this is simplified queries and this is how you will be able to make the different queries. And you can also pass the query variables, HTTP headers, like you wanted to send a token. So this is like a HTTP post request you are making. This query is going in the payload. And the other things is it's like underlying REST implementation. So in the HTTP post, you can be adding few things in the headers. You can add something in the query variables, like query variables if you wanted to pass this one value dynamically, right? Uh, you are doing this schema here we have you are creating user creating recipe. So we are passing all those things in the body, right? So instead of writing everything here with the values, you can just create a query variables and pass those query variables. So this query will get those query variables from here in this definition. So query variables are something like this. Here I have like a title and you will be able to use the title here. I think it should be dollar or something Able to recall here if I create ID okay this is helping I think so this is how you can create a variables you can append headers and this is how you can pass the dynamic values okay that's it uh, in the next video, we will extend it. We will create a base type definition and base schema, and we will extend it from different resolvers uh, and type definitions.